He's the brand new chairman of Oversight Committee. I wonder if he's still getting used to that on the House side. Uh, Trey Gowdy joins us uh, from, of course, South Carolina. And he's not, I'm not sure if you're going to be heading home this weekend, but oftentimes it's a getaway day for you. But not when so much action's happened on Capitol Hill. And, you know, Congressman, uh, welcome back. But we Thank were just you. talking about the border and the need to bulk up the border and, and get that uh, wall going. And one of the main reasons is, is to stop the opioids from going across the border because there's a big interest in getting it here. Do you see the link? Oh, of course, yeah. That, you, you, well, a nation has to have border security for lots of reasons, one of which is to, is to thwart the cartels. Um, I, I, would, I would also uh, tell your viewers that there are also legal drugs that are dispensed or consumed illegally. These are prescription drugs, so it's heroin, but it's also those opioids that are prescribed uh, right. outside the course of a professional practice. Uh, and we need a strategy for both. One is a border strategy, the other is an interior strategy. Absolutely. And I saw your hearing this week up on Capitol Hill where you're talking about reauthorizing the Office of National Drug Control Policy. You say that the problem with them is the fact that they don't have a strategy and we don't really know where we're going right now. Well, they have a statutory deadline of submitting a strategy to us by February the 1st. Uh, that date has come and gone. Um, it's still being authorized, it's still being funded, but, but, but the opioid crisis is getting worse. Um, and, and it's not asking too much that you comply with a statute and get us your national plan. Mm -hmm. All related agencies, what is your plan to stop and thwart, whether it's uh, enforcement, whether it's prevention, whether it's treatment, get us your plan. He's committed to do it. I was actually happy the hearing was incredibly bipartisan, which is mm -hmm. rare for Washington, yep. but it was a good hearing. It was. So let's talk about uh, health care, which does include, of course, the opioid problem. You saw what happened in the Senate overnight or at like 2 o'clock in the morning, how they voted no. John McCain was that crucial vote to uh, their three Republicans that just said they were not going to support this. And that meant the bill did not go back to the House for conference. They're saying they didn't trust you guys to fix it because they had a lot of problems with it. Many people said they should have voted yes, sent it to you guys. You all could have fixed it in conference. What, what's your thought? Uh, well, we do have a lot of problems, but not being able to trust Paul Ryan is not one of them. He's one of the most honorable people I've ever met inside or outside of politics. You can agree with him or disagree with him, but he's an incredibly honorable person. Our problem is that for seven years we've been telling folks what we're against and what we're opposed to, and then we've had seven months to govern. And the best we can come up with is a skinny plan on 24 hours notice. Uh, we got to get better at telling people what we believe, why we believe it, and then persuading them that it's right for the country. We've had plenty of time to do it. We set unrealistic expectations, and then we never meet them, which leads to anger and frustration. It's a complicated issue, but it's always been. We've had seven years to figure it out, and the best we came up with was something called skinny. Right. And yeah. let me ask you, where do you go from here? I know it's just sinking in. It's only been about six hours. But should you just move on or go back? No, we got to go back. It impacts 20 percent of the economy. It was a fundamental promise of, of, of the Trump campaign, and, and it desperately needs to be done. The Affordable Care Act is failing. Um, if you're going to fail, though, fail doing what you really fundamentally believe. And the health care, I would propose changes that are transformational, and it's going to require persuading my fellow citizens, including some independents and Democrats, that this is best for the country. It's not going to be done with 24 hours notice and a bill that has the word skinny in it. So sure. it's hard to persuade people. I get that. I used to have to do it for a living, and I'm married. So it's hard <laughs> to persuade people. But that's what we got to do. Well, speaking Definitely. of your living, you're a former prosecutor. You've never lost a case. So we want to talk to you about what's happening with the Democrats, obstruction of justice. You have Debbie Wasserman Schultz and her aide destroying the hard, um, the hard drives and found in his garage. And then when you look at Hillary Clinton, she destroyed 33,000 subpoenaed emails. Her aides hammered her Blackberry, their Blackberries with hammers. And she gave her phone to the FBI and it didn't have the SIM Don't card. Don't leave out James Comey. James Comey as well. And I know that some of your, your colleagues in Congress, they are going to investigate some of these individuals. How are the Democrats, though, getting away with this, with this when they're going after the Republicans for having a meeting with some Russian lawyer about adoption? Uh, well, because there's been more coverage of Justin Bieber canceling his tour than there has been of <laughs> right. Loretta Lynch talking to Jim Comey about whether it's an investigation or a matter. It breaks my heart, what's left of it as a prosecutor, to see the justice system politicized, criminalized, or, or held up 
and subject to election cycles. I have a lot higher expectations for our Justice Department and the women and men who have dedicated their careers to it. Our decisions should be based on facts, right. not the calendar, not election outcomes, not who we're mad at, facts. Bob Mueller has his lane, but everything that's not in his lane is in the Department of Justice's lane, and right now that's being right. run by Jeff Sessions. So if, if, if there are better ways to me to communicate sure. than a letter, um, so I didn't sign the letter, but I understand the frustration right. of my colleagues who did. Absolutely. Um, we hadn't heard the news about Justin Bieber. Uh, thanks for breaking you're that welcome. on their show. Right. You hit somebody yesterday. Right. But Congressman, thank you very much for joining us live today from Statuary Hall.